Hello, Stone Village. Happy Sunday. It's actually Saturday afternoon. Uh, I'm at home uh, recording a Sunday sermon to reflection. Um, why? Well, because I spent three hours this morning at the church, uh, collared, uh, attempting to record uh, the sermon. Yet the danger without a live audience is that you can hit stop and delete and be overly self-critical of yourself. And after three hours, I was done. And so I decided that I was going to record uh, the sermon from home, and I was going to do it in one take, and whatever happens, happens. Um, I should note that the boys are free in the house. You may hear barking. You may hear growling. Um, you may hear um, something that, that reminds you of, of a documentary on National Geographic. I promise you the dogs are fine, and uh, hopefully they'll be calm for the next 10 minutes. So um, I'm going to follow the same outline as last week, uh, collect um, the scripture lesson and, and the reflection. And so um, here we go. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Prepare us, O God, to hear your word through the scriptures of this day. Confront us with your claims upon our lives. Clarify the choices we must make if our lives are to have meaning and purpose. Help us to respond to the one who came as the bread of life, so that we may know life at its fullest and at its very best. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Our scripture lesson today is Psalm 13. How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I bear pain in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all day long? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? Consider and answer me, O Lord my God. Give light to my eyes, or I will sleep the sleep of death. And my enemy will say, I have prevailed. My foes will rejoice because I am shaken. But I trusted in your steadfast love. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord, because the Lord has dealt bountifully with me. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be we are a people wandering in the wilderness. The life we knew is on hold, and I suspect collectively we are wondering how long, O oh Lord? How long, O oh Lord, will we wander? How long, O oh Lord, will we carry uncertainty? How long, O oh Lord, will we, will we wait for deliverance? How long, O oh Lord? One inescapable reality of life is waiting waiting for someone to show up, waiting for something to happen, waiting for things to change. We spend most of our lives waiting. We do. As children, we wait for Christmas. We wait for summer break. We wait to grow up. As adults, we wait for the right job. We wait for that special someone to make our life complete. We wait to have children. We wait for the promotion. We wait for retirement. We wait a lot. Another reality of life is most of us do not like to wait. We do not wait well. We easily become impatient and frustrated and even angry when confronted with waiting. Oftentimes we seek the shortest line. We pay for express shipping. We book the direct flight. We dismiss those not moving at our pace. We repeatedly press the same button on the vending machine or the elevator when our request is slow to arrive. Lots of buttons being pushed, namely our own. We are a people waiting, asking how long, O oh God? I wonder, how are you waiting? 
Are you waiting to simply pass the time? Are you waiting passively? Are you waiting actively? Where are you waiting? Perhaps those questions seem odd to you. Yet in this current wilderness of, of life, how you wait, where you wait, is the difference between light and darkness. You see, most of us do not wait in the present, the here and now. We will either move into the past or we will move into the future. When we wait in the future, we often do so with anxiety and, and fear. We are confronted with our powerlessness over an unknown reality that has not come to pass. When we wait in the past, we often do so with sadness and regret, confronted with what was or what was not. Either way, into the past or into the future, we postpone and we deny our life here and now. We forget that today is holy. Today is a gift. You and I only get this day once in a lifetime. Just once. This day, no matter how difficult or exhausting, is not meant to be escaped or denied. This day is meant to be tasted and savored to its fullest. This day is the only place where you and I can be fully alive. This day is the only place where you and I truly experience the comforting, steadfast love of God. Everyone, everywhere, in every age, waits. That's an inescapable reality of life. And although most of us are taught to spend our lives in a mad dash to nowhere fast, doing our best to consume and control every aspect of life, even as we wait, it's not the only way to live. You see, when we learn to embrace the waiting periods of life, living in the present moment, we no longer need to know exactly what is coming tomorrow. Only that whatever it is, some good, some bad, some, are you kidding me? God is present. God is, is with us today. And today is enough more than enough. And the weight of waiting begins to abate. And eventually, if we can be patient, if we can be patient, we come to understand that life is an exercise in transformation. We're becoming as we go. And it is a lifetime of slow growth to become our best self person that God created us to be. I realize in this world of isolation, this wilderness place, the temptation is to live anywhere but here and now. I get it. I do. And yet, you have this one precious life to live here today. So don't deny it. Don't postpone it. Don't try to escape it. Be present to your life in your waiting. Let it be an act of faithfulness. Let it be an act of courage. Let it be an act of love. Show up for yourself. Show up for others as God shows up for you. Thanks be to God. Amen. I give thanks to God for each of you. And I pray that you will bear witness to the love of God in this world today 
to those to whom love is a stranger, they will find in you a generous and loving friend. Until next week, stoners, 